Johnny, Psychic, Fun in second sight. Link hits the GBA in Legend of Zelda, Four Swords. And what do you get when you cross Resident Evil and porn? This game. Can we show that? It's game time. Rust proofing in Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. Have I rusted in the past? What does that mean? Hello and welcome to Hexblade, the show that stole my youth, my vitality, and gave me carpal tunnel syndrome. And I loved every minute of it, except for the minutes when I was playing Zykatana. Right. On today's show, we had a game where you use your mind to move things. A brand new installment in the Legend of Zelda series. More karaoke revolution, because a lot of people think they can sing if they've been drinking. And two of the weirdest games we here at x have ever played. Harmful Park. And no one can stop Mr. Domino. I swear that is the actual title. And if you thought that was more than enough for one episode, you'd be wrong. Because we are bringing back games that make you feel funny. The most downloaded segment in X-Play history. Now here's a hint. It's about pornographic video games from Japan. I already feel uncomfortable. I know, isn't it exciting? Mm. So let's start the show with the latest game about psychics who throw things with their minds because using their arms isn't challenging enough. Here's our preview of Second Sight. Vanek, you okay? John Vanek's got a lot on his mind. This guy. A lot to weigh inside the newly renovated corridors of Vanek's brain are the answers to why he appears to have been groomed by an eight-foot, poorly dispositioned standard poodle. Rather than wonder who's been making his car payments, Vanek immediately charges into discovering the source of his condition. Wait a second. Get down to the ground. Let me explain. I was just... Shut up. Second Sight seeks to exploit psyopses, the mind is a terrible thing to taste approach, along with its traditional weapons use. Development team Free Radical has made a game reminiscent of Time Splitters and character design is similar in that enjoyable, exaggerated style, including the cartoonishly sizable mitts. As we learn throughout the game's story, Vatic is an expert on psychic phenomena, most notably the nation's leading debunker of cerebral projection. I debunk psychics, I don't confirm them. Perhaps you never met a real one. The convoluted altered timeline of events plague Vatic's mind as he and you piece together the fate of our reluctant hero and his hangover-sized headaches. What Vatic discovers is these headaches are a result of his powerfully retooled brain, capable of rendering the inanimate and animate and the airborne weapons of mass confusion. Vatic's powers are beautifully animated and engrossingly interactive. Object manipulating telekinetic powers are presented as cyclable targets avoiding easy access and usage. A charm ability allows temporary invisibility. Astral projection allows a ghostly version of your bad self to pass effortlessly through security fences. Though these ghostly forms will easily fool humans, the game developers cleverly made CCTV camera detection an obstacle. After all, they have no minds to alter. <laughs> Our Psychic Friends Network Employee of the Year also has a room-clearing mind fart ability. But it's really the telekinetic ability that has the most satisfying mischief factor. <laughs> Tossing objects and ragdolled human stunt dummies around, or just picking up dead guys for puppet dances, adds layers of hilarity to the experience. <laughs> the game changes gears in a flashback to the time before Vatic's Spanish Inquisition makeover. Gun combat comes complete with visually charged tracer fire battlefield scenarios. We especially like the sniper capability with the lower window scope view. Targeting is effortless and fast paced, fueling the fury of the moment. Our initial taste of this game was satisfying on so many levels. Hell, who doesn't love picking up crap in their mind and throwing it at people? Look for Second Sight in the fall of 2004. So if anyone saw our preview of PsyOps, a game with virtually the same plot as this one, you'll notice that Second Sight is a lot less bloody. So far, the main difference between these two seems to be the level of violence. In other words, PsyOps has exploding heads in it. But will those exploding heads be enough to help PsyOps explode into our hearts? Or will the kinder, gentler approach of Second Sight win us over? Why do I think it's going to be exploding heads? Because they're like boils. Mm. We'll be sure to review it when it comes out. Okay, now we have a treat for the Link fans out there. Well, it'll be months and months before the upcoming single-player Legend of Zelda title for the GameCube comes out. There's a new Zelda multiplayer title available, like now. And by multiplayer, we mean if you own four Game Boys. How does it work? Find out in our review of Legend of Zelda Four Swords Adventures for the GameCube. The Legend of Zelda Four Swords Adventures is Nintendo's latest attempt to get you to buy Game Boy. Fortunately for Nintendo, they've actually got something here. 
See, our link is somehow split into four links, all the same except for the color they feel best expresses their personality to the world. <laughs> then I think they go to Oz. <laughs> See, I only have a vague idea of what's going on because while the opening cutscenes are unskippable, they are all in endless streams of text, and I don't play video games to read. There is a single player game where you control all four of your color coordinated friends as one. You can change formation to accomplish tasks or cut a swath of destruction. It's like Sherman's march through Georgia up in here. But the real point is the multiplayer game. Up to four friends can play at once. And when you're in the overworld, the action is on the screen. While you're in houses or otherwise blocked from the gamer's omniscient gaze, you see individual action on your Game Boy screen. If you only have three players, the fourth becomes someone's hanger-on, like some sort of limp appendage you'd excise if you didn't need it later to help you lift something heavy. The game urges cooperation between our four frisky friends, because you all have to work together to progress in the game. Not all booty bump and fun, though. The competition for the Force Gems, aka these tiny little triangles and other shiny things, leads to screaming competition. Just like in the real world, there's always one piss that ruins the vinegar in pursuit of the riches the land has to offer, one stinker that eschews the precepts of the Geneva Convention and just can't play nice. Fortunately for us heroes of light, there's retribution to be had in the name of truth and all that is good. You can pick the offender up and carry him around so as to render his maleficent antics useless. You can throw or push him down into holes. You can pick him up and throw him into an enemy, though this tactic is like beating El Salvador at soccer. You can't take it back, and the result is all at war. This is not a game for a family with one kid in a polo shirt and one kid in a trench coat. Differences will be magnified. Deep-seated resentments will surface. Now, it could be a lesson in cooperation, but more likely your house will turn into a smoldering crater where there was once only peace, harmony, and a mild insect infestation. That is, if you can afford the setup in the first place. You can play the single-player game with a controller. The multiplayer must be played with not only the GameCube, but a GBA and a link cable for everyone. I'll give you a minute to add it all up in your head. Yeah, I got lost somewhere around the third 99.99, but it's a lot. If everyone already has all the stuff, then great. Legend of Zelda Four Swords Adventures is so rich, fun, and engaging that it totally earns a four out of five. It's really fun, but don't give this game to children because you can totally screw with other players and uh, it's only a matter of time before you start wailing on the other players for pushing you off a cliff in the game. And Morgan hits really hard. I should Shouldn't have stolen her force up. gems or push you. It's, it's a whimsical game about a little boy splitting the force. It, it inspires violence. Wow. Coming up, because your drunk friends will always think singing is a great idea, Karaoke Revolution Volume 2. Still legally obligated to introduce Adam Zettler and Morgan Webb. Oh, yes, you are. Welcome back to X Play. You know, we've done a lot of horrible things in our day, but one of the worst was singing in all the karaoke revolution previews. You know, I'm not saying we're atonal, I'm just saying that the sound of a moose mating is slightly more melodic. I watch the Nature Channel. So we are deeply saddened to bring you a review of Karaoke Revolution 2. Mm -hmm, but at least this time we didn't sing. No thanks necessary. Here's a review of Karaoke Revolution 2. Since my baby left me, well, I found a new place to dwell. Last year, Konami released Karaoke Revolution to excellent reviews and apparently good enough sales to warrant a second volume. So please put your hands together for the aptly named Karaoke Revolution Volume 2. I wanna rock and roll all night. Originally, they promised an expansion disc to the first Karaoke Revolution. And while Volume 2 isn't that, it might as well be. It's a standalone game that doesn't require the original, but it does have the feel of an expansion pack rather than a brand new game. The only downside is that the novelty of the original game is missing, but newcomers won't mind that, and veterans will appreciate the chance to dive into more than 30 new songs. And that's a good thing. It's a damn cold night. It might be a matter of taste, but we like the selection of songs even better this time around. The new songs are, well, newer, with fairly recent tunes like It's My Life from No Doubt. There's also classic 80s sting-alongs, such as Every Breath You Take. 
The selection here covers a wide variety of genres and difficulty level. Some songs are intrinsically easy, while others, like Heartbreak Hotel, take a lot of practice to get the whole bloated, phlegmy Elvis thing just right. Well, since my baby left me, well, I found a new place to dwell. Luckily, the overall harshness of the judging can also be tweaked to fit your particular skill level. Whoa, that's... that's outrageous. Insofar as the game itself, not much has changed. You still need a PS2 compatible USB headset. There's one included. You still sing along with the music and the crowd judges your performance as evidenced by the strength of their cheers or rapidly dwindling numbers. Technically, you don't have to sing the correct lyrics as long as you match the proper pitch and length of each vocal segment. So, theoretically, you could sing gibberish the whole time. But that... that just seems wrong. <laughs> The major addition to Volume 2 is the new medley mode, which strings together short clips of several different songs. That said, the Karaoke Revolution series is one that could carry on for years, whether your neighbors like it or not. We give it a needful 4 out of 5. I thought our singing was bad, but at least we didn't grunt or howl into the microphone. You know, I take issue with the title, Karaoke Revolution. A revolution is the overthrow of an oppressive government. The only thing that gets overthrown in this are the oppressive laws of good taste. Well, once again, at least we didn't sing this time. That can't be remedied. Have you heard my rendition of Harper Valley PTA? No! Okay, go to break before we have to pay for the rights. Quick! Up next, if Harmful Park isn't a weird game, I don't know what is! Two people? I learned how to zip yesterday. That was a good day oh. for all of us. Welcome back to X Play, the show that tracks down strange and unusual games so that we can make fun of them because they're different. Yes, once again, we've scanned the globe to find two of the weirdest games money can buy. And once again, they're both from Japan. So sit back, relax, and watch more weird games. Our first stop on our tour of the weird is Harmful Park. This charmingly insane shooter is set in an amusement park gone wrong. The park begins as an innocent family-oriented attraction called Heartful Park. This strangely jovial guy invades it with his robotic army of cutesy animals. Luckily, his former assistant works at the park and sends her daughters out on high-tech hoverbikes to stop the deranged inventor. Armed with weaponry like a pie-throwing hand catapult and dual ice cream cone lasers, you must blast through multiple stages of the park while flying gumball machines, zombie elephant heads, and helicopters that look like dogs try to bar your path. Also, a monkey steals your hamburger. The title screen claims the game contains highbrow gag and pure shooting. The shooting I can see, but it's a bit light on the highbrow gags. About the closest it gets is a Moby Dick reference. The rest of the time, you'll be assaulted by giant schoolgirls who attack you with strawberries and 10-story kings with deadly beer guts. Luckily, if things get too intense, you can resort to your ice cream sundae super blaster attack. I will give Harmful Park credit for having the most unusual boss battle I've ever seen, in which a wedding is broken up at a chapel and you must dodge the abandoned groom's tears while shooting a giant heart on the wall. Harmful Park isn't even the most offbeat Japanese shooter around, but it's certainly the only game I've played in which a monkey spanked its ass at me while riding a cow train, a worthy addition to the roster of the weird. Next up, a little-known PS1 classic. No one can stop Mr. Domino. Described as an action puzzle game, this is by far the best domino setting up and knocking down game ever made. You play the plucky Mr. Domino, whose sole purpose in life is to run laps around everyday environments and set up dominoes in key places. Once the dominoes are set, he knocks them down and starts a chain reaction of massive proportions that no one can stop. The game is badly named. Turns out a whole lot of things can stop Mr. Domino, up to and including magical fruit and swinging boxes of Pocky. The guy can't catch a break. Even his anthropomorphic domino buddies beat the hell out of him with doors and run him down in their jeeps. Who knew dominoes lived in such a cutthroat society? 
No one can stop Mr. Domino is a hefty challenge, and not always in a good way. But there's nothing else out there like it, and it'll probably run you about five bucks at the most. It's a small price to pay to watch a domino dance number on the stage of the weird. Harmful park seems harmless. Mr. Domino, surprisingly stoppable. Coming up, more anime porn. Why? Because we can. Because I'm disembodied doesn't mean I don't have feelings for Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. The announcer started to creep me out. It's like a bad horror movie in cyberspace, you know, where no one can hear you scream. Well, unless you plug a headset into a USB port and then you put Welcome the microphone back. in and go, ah! Welcome back to X-Play. Once again, we're bringing you a brand new chapter in our most popular segment ever, games that make you feel funny. How funny? Really, really funny. If by funny you mean sick and uncomfortable. And how? Here's our expose of one of the creepiest anime porn game series. There's a series? There's a series. Death's Blood. Warning, the following review has been shown to cause feelings of funniness in adult males. Connoisseurs of the teledildonic arts may fondly recall our review of Sexy Beach 2. The Japanese call it a dating sim. Technically, it's not a game. It's more an exercise in pestering your date until she relents and gives you pity sex, just like in real life. So imagine our surprise when we discovered that Illusion, the Japanese developer responsible for Sexy Beach, actually makes real games where you shoot stuff. <laughs> This is DBVR. It's a Resident Evil clone with a twist. Hey, what's a nice girl like you doing in a raven-infested back alley like this? I can't really understand what you're saying, but okay. Whoa, 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 scratch that nice girl part. Yep, that's the twist. You shoot demonic banana slugs. You talk to exotically dressed women. Then you help them get a little less exotically dressed. The game's all in Japanese, so our comprehension was limited, to say the least. There's this alien meteorite thingy and a bunch of naked chicks in jars, and well, that's about all we could figure out about the plot. We definitely have no idea why this guy likes to stroke his mustache so much. We do know that in the future, there will be a crippling shortage of pants. The DB and DBVR stands for Des Blood, which is German for the blood. Yeah, that clears everything up. Over the years, Illusion has pumped out a half dozen or so titles in the Des Blood series. They're pretty much all the same game with slightly different incomprehensible plots and a new set of interactive racks, with one notable exception, Des Blood Race. Yeah, bring on the hot cars and hotter women or poorly rendered women who run around barefoot with no pants on and race against dinosaurs and a somersaulting secret agent. You race as a number of women from the Death Blood series. If you emerge victorious, you get to take a victory lap with one of your friends. Once again, the plot is way over our heads. Let's see, this woman is after an evil clown. And this one likes to talk to magic frogs. In the final race of the game, you actually get to play as the frog. When the frog wins, Yep, back to DBVR. Like Resident Evil, DBVR features lush yet non-interactive backgrounds, iffy targeting controls, and of course, crap camera angles. <laughs> but really, what do you want from a game to let you truly reap the rewards due to a righteous champion of all that is good? All I know is, that's making me feel a little funny. The frog did what? Well, he didn't turn into a prince. Sorry, ladies. That is honestly one of the most grotesque and disgusting things I've ever seen on this show. And it sold millions of copies worldwide. Go figure. Okay, how about something that is usually pornographic but clean today? Viewer mail. Today's email is from Kevin S. He writes, I'm a 18, 16 year old loser with no grace or balance. In other words, I'm perfect for a dance dance revolution. I'm a male with long brown hair and facial hair. I look like a cross between Jesus and Charles Manson. I was watching X play review a Star Wars game when I saw a Wookiee dance. I videotaped myself playing DDR and the similarity between myself and the dancing Wookiee is disturbing. Kevin, please 
Send us the video. We, we totally won't put it on air. Oh, no, no. We, we just want to watch it. It makes us feel better about ourselves, really. It's not for public consumption. I mean, also, if you have a videotape of yourself pretending you have a lightsaber and you're doing Jedi moves, um, send us that as well. Once again, we, we won't put it on the air. You could also just send it on the Internet and we could just pass it around to That's true. all of our friends. Yeah, just get an FTP site and we'll, 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 we'll find it there. But, Kevin, um, I do want to make you feel a little better. You know, when I do DDR, I would say I look like a dancing Wookiee, but... It's you look kind sort of, of like an orangutan, like kind of gangly and, and right. flopping around there. So yeah, if you, if you took like a bunch of methamphetamines and jacked up an orangutan and then put him to a beat. That you would you totally be you. Yeah. Check I out our website. I feel great about myself. G4TechTV.com. Good night.